So this is where we are in the droplet burning problem where we got the solution for beta which is the Schwarzschild coupling function in terms of alpha t and alpha o the, the, the thermal uh, uh, the, the, the enthalpy and uh, this is the uh, oxidizer mass fraction in the ambience um, uh, in terms of psi where psi is actually a non dimensional radius which is actually the inverse of radius like as, as radius increases psi is going to decrease okay and then we are looking for uh, boundary conditions and also an interface condition because psi uh, involves this m dot which is unknown and that is what we are trying to find out. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is to actually look at the interface uh, flux boundary condition um, at the droplet surface and we are trying to actually form beta which means we have to look at what happens to alpha t and alpha o what we are doing here is to actually look for what happens to alpha o so if you now look at how what happens to y o divided by w o nu o will give you what happens for alpha o and uh, then we need to look at what happens to alpha t which means we have to look at a energy flux balance at the uh, droplet surface interface right so as far as that is concerned uh, if you now look at so this, this was basically a mass balance at the at the uh, droplet surface um, <coughs> based on convective flux and a diffusive flux uh, as far as the, the um, um, energy balance is concerned what, what we can understand is now if heat heat conducted heat conducted into the droplet um, must be just sufficient and I will explain what is meant by just sufficient pretty soon but sufficient is what we should start with um, sufficient to vaporize the fuel uh, leaving the droplet that is to say if you now have a flame with a flame temperature and then the heat gets conducted inwards radially inwards the, the heat conduction flux at the surface should be equal at least to the rate at which the, the, the heat is required for it to vaporize right and that is what is meant by saying just sufficient or at least sufficient um, that is to say if you, if you have excess heat that is being conducted part of it in fact bulk of it is going to be taken by the latent heat of vaporization to vaporize the droplet into vapor uh, and then you will have a further temperature gradient for the temperature to vary within the droplet okay. Now if you think about very small droplets what happens is you have a very quick thermal equilibration that happens within the droplet so the droplet is nearly at pretty much the same temperature everywhere within with hardly any heat flux that is going on because with, if you do not have any temperature gradients you do not have any heat fluxes. So essentially the droplet is looking forward to only that much heat um, that is by, by conduction uh, that is required for it to vaporize okay and that that is a kind of equilibrium that is attained and th th this is reasonable. Um, so what this means is uh, 4 pi r squared uh, k dt by dr at r equals rl is equal to m dot l now this is in, in, in some sense very similar to the, the convective diffusive balance that we have gone through this is the diffusive part this is the convective part except what is important here for you is you have uh, this is simply a, a m dot times y o okay that is like the mass flux of the oxidizer that is convecting uh, inward in the space that is vacated by the droplet regression okay that is what that is what this dictates but here this convection is actually based on the latent heat of vaporization okay. So in other words you need to have latent heat of vaporization times the rate at which the droplet is uh, uh, regressing or which is the same as the rate at which the gases are issuing out of the droplet surface. So this is this is pretty much the same um, of course uh, we are we are neglecting um, uh, a few things here neglecting radiation that is a significant effect wherever you have phase interfaces and we, 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 um, we notice this 
when we were adopting the schwab zeldovich formulation with the nine, with the 11 assumptions and we, we, we did neglect the heat flux due to radiation um, and then at that point we uh, we, we noticed or we, we pointed out that uh, radiation can be neglected in a homogeneous system but not in a heterogeneous system heterogeneous system meaning uh, when you have multiple uh, phases okay physical phases so here we have a phase interface between liquid and solid gas where uh, radiation could be pretty important but of course uh, we neglected for simplicity so neglecting radiation uh, radiation and kinetic energy we are not worrying about this little kinetic energy that we are going to have for the vapors that are coming out at a certain velocity because of the Doppler regression that is significantly small so th this is reasonably okay to neglect it. Um, now L of course is the uh, latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization per unit mass of the fuel. fuel um, at the at temperature at uh, TL let us say uh, that is the droplet surface temperature uh, TL as I said if the droplet is reasonably small and you have a thermal equilibrium within the droplet the temperature is going to be pretty much the same at TL whatever is the surface temperature is going to be the same uniformly throughout within it uh, at the moment we are not really we interested in what is happening within the droplet and that is that is the reason why we are assuming this just sufficient that means we are not going to have any further heat, heat conduction after the latent heat has been removed um, okay. So uh, now let us uh, of course we have Lewis number L equal to 1 uh, which is uh, K over rho C P D and of course we, the, the other thing that we also do is uh, take uh, T naught equal to T L um, for convenience and this is not very difficult to uh, swath, uh, swallow because uh, we have seen this before. Uh, if you now take a different value and then we still insist on T naught you can have two integrals and we find that these things are actually showing up wherever you have alpha T or uh, um, beta showing up it is all in derivatives therefore uh, a, a constant addition is not a uh, problem. So that we can we can do this uh, so therefore this condition then uh, is now going to translate to uh, because we can now take for example take the M dot down here and then uh, K can be replaced by rho C P D right. So you replace K by rho C P D and um, of course C P can be stuck with the uh, temperature and then you have 4 pi R square rho D divided by M dot coming from the other side and then we look at how psi is, um, is uh, uh, defined and keep noting that 4 pi R square rho D is in the denominator uh, and the way psi goes is inverse of rho. So we should uh, for example we got a negative sign here right and similarly when you now try to write this in terms of the non-dimensional uh, independent variable uh, psi uh, you should you should have uh, a d by d psi of uh, integral t naught to t c b d t equals minus l that is the reason why you got the negative sign. So if you now try to say I will uh, divide this by Q and this by W O nu O which means I go back and divide this by W O nu O and this by Q I will have wherever I have a Y O I will have a alpha O and wherever I have integral T naught to T C P D T divided by Q I will have a um, alpha T then subtract one from the other to get alpha T minus alpha O which means we get the beta right. So uh, putting putting the two flux balances at the droplet interface 
together um, we get d beta by d, uh, d, d psi uh, of course uh, I should go back and uh, write this at uh, L so d beta by d psi at L equal to minus L divided by Q minus y o l divided by w o nu o all right all right now this is the interface condition in addition to this we need to have the regular Dirichlet boundary conditions right so the Dirichlet boundary conditions at at the uh, uh, at the uh, uh, boundaries to the domain are the Dirichlet boundary conditions domain R um, we should say at R equals infinity psi equal to 0 um, okay at R equals infinity psi equal to 0 right and what, what, what would that mean we would say what, what would be a beta your beta would be whatever is alpha T and alpha O at R equals infinity which means whatever is the temperature T infinity right at, at, uh, at, at far away and whatever is y o infinity so for example if you have air as your ambience your y o infinity will be like 0.23 because only about 23 percent by mass is going to be oxygen the other one the, the rest is going to be nitrogen so you, you have a diluent present in your ambience in your oxidizing ambience which can be taken into account you can also take into account the ambient temperature and keep in mind if we do not have to worry about a combustion heat release then uh, we could still solve the evaporation problem if your T infinity is higher than T L all right and that is that is going to basically mean that you have heat conduction simply from the ambience not necessarily from the flame okay. so the T infinity is going to play a role and as a matter of fact you know this is actually the sensible enthalpy term and this is the heat release term so this is already showing up as a competition between the two okay. So uh, we will see these things a lot more clearly as, as we go along but essentially what it means is uh, beta can be equal to beta infinity which is alpha T infinity minus alpha O infinity which is nothing but T naught to T infinity Cp dT divided by Q minus um, or, or should I say plus plus y O infinity divided by w o nu o that is the one boundary condition at r equals r l we are kind of coming inwards because that is how psi increases from 0 so psi is now going to be equal to some psi l which is saying psi l is equal to r l integral r l to infinity right and uh, so psi l uh, and beta will have some value beta L which is nothing but alpha T L minus alpha O L which is integral T naught to T L C P D T divided by Q um, plus Y O L divided by W O new o we have already seen that if you now take T naught equal to T L for convenience this would not have any contribution but that is all right let us let us just at the moment we will worry only about beta L let us not worry about how it is exactly defined we will ultimately see that what matters is not exactly each of these but be infin beta infinity minus beta L in which case we can now put these things together and these integrals will now go together and then you will get an integral goes from T L to T infinity okay. So the T the T superscript not gets out of the way anyway. So uh, good. That means we we are, we are now ready to uh, attack the solution better. We were armed with these. So let's do uh, one by one. Um, so let us say how do, how do how do I number this? 
yeah, I think I should I should mention what is psi L here for for the record, where psi L is m dot integral R L to infinity um, four pi R squared rho d to the negative one d R. Okay, um, and I think we should probably call this uh, as two. Right, so we call this as one, and okay. Now, uh, so the first thing we can do is uh, at uh, r equals r l, beta l equal to a plus b e to the minus psi l at r equals infinity uh, beta infinity is simply equal to a plus b because psi equal to 0 so e to the 0 is going to be 1 and uh, subtract to get rid of a and uh, actually you know by now you should get the idea of what, what, what the drift is we are not really interested in solving for alpha I mean betas at all. Okay, that's that's not, that's not really our problem. Our problem is to find psi l so that from psi l we can get an idea of m dot, and m dot is what we are basically looking for. We are not looking for the actual profiles. So the, the real problem is what is the rate at which the droplet is shrinking. Okay, everything else is a detail, and uh, so we will solve the we will we will keep our focus on the problem. All these details like how exactly beta is varying. Uh, that means how is the temperature going to vary, how is oxidizer concentration going to vary and all these things are all exam questions, uh, PhD qualifying exam questions and so on okay. So that is for you to figure out but uh, uh, we, will, we will focus on our problem that means at the moment we can just subtract these two get rid of the A we are not going to bother about evaluating it uh, for ourselves um, and uh, we are simply going to get B equals uh, beta infinity minus beta l plus b e to the minus psi l right that is true so uh, b equals beta infinity minus beta l um, plus b uh, right then Oh, question is what is beta 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 infinity uh, minus beta l? But beta infinity minus beta l is nothing but you just have to. This is this is beta infinity. This is beta l. So this is beta infinity. This is beta l. Subtract one from the other. Um, so you get sigma k equals one to n. Uh, Y, y k infinity integral T L to T uh, infinity C P K D T that is a that is a fancy way of writing C P simply you could have taken the y k inside and uh, uh, but, but we want to show the infinity very clearly uh, divided by Q and uh, the reason why we are not really worrying about y k L is because as I said here if T L is equal to T naught this is not going to contribute right um, and plus Y K Y K uh, sorry Y um, Y O infinity minus Y O L divided by W O nu O right. So that is what uh, we get then we have to use the interface condition. So what we have now is we have b is equal to this plus b e to the uh, minus psi l um, with which you can evaluate b all right but you, we are not really bothered about as I said evaluating b we are, um, uh, we are not interested in evaluating a as well we are not interested in finding betas what we are really interested in is to apply the interface boundary condition so that we can even eliminate b okay. So fortunately 
um, the interface boundary con inter interface flux condition uh, put together in terms of beta has uh, it in terms of derivative. So if you have it in terms of derivative, a automatically drops out. You try to take a derivative here, a doesn't even show up. B shows up, okay. And between that and this, we will eliminate B as well, okay. That's it. That's what we are going to do. So uh, using the interface flux balance, right? Uh, we get B e to the minus psi L. Um, equal to L over Q, L over Q, D beta by D psi is going to have a minus B e to the minus uh, e to the minus psi, right? And evaluated at L, right? So we, we should have a negative sign, but they also had a negative sign here, which I'm going to turn it as positive, right? So uh, we we now have this as L over Q divided by to plus y o l divided by w o nu o. Now if you uh, call this as your 3 uh, uh, I guess uh, this is your 3 and uh, this as your 4 uh, then what you do is uh, we now use uh, 4 and uh, uh, we, we, we now use 4 and uh, uh, 3 together in order to get e to the minus x, xi l and use what is the definition of xi l okay that's what that's what we do uh, so putting 4 and 3 together and using 2 right we get psi L equal to natural logarithm we got the natural logarithm because between these two if you now try to get rid of B you will be working with e to the minus psi L okay and if you now try to extract psi L out of it you will get a natural logarithm okay so natural logarithm uh, of 1 plus sigma k equals 1 to n uh, yk infinity integral tl to t infinity cpi dt divided by q plus yo infinity minus y o l divided by w o nu o so that's coming from here divided by l over q plus y o l divided by w o nu o that's coming from here And this one plus was coming because we had a b and a b there, so you could have a one plus. So that's that's the mathematics. And then in this, you now use two because psi l has this definition. Uh, so you now get a, in dimensional form in dimensional form m dot is going to be 1 over integral r l to infinity 4 pi r squared rho d to the negative 1 dr natural logarithm just for the record got to write the whole thing again uh, 1 plus sigma k equals 1 to n yk infinity tl over t infinity cpi dt divided by q plus 
y o infinity minus y o l divided by w o nu o divided by l stop we could do a little bit of manipulation um, if you now try to multiply q throughout both numerator and denominator you could write this as plus q and this would be plus q y o l divided by w o nu o of course in the final videos we can edit out this time it took for it to write okay and then we can just show the final expression written again and uh, here we will uh, basically point out that we have multiplied um, the numerator and denominator throughout by q so that the q shows up here and here instead of at the bottom of this and this. So uh, that that's that's the final expression for m dot and as usual we do not understand this okay so we, we get some complicated looking expression which just does not make sense. We started out thinking we wanted to get the d squared law okay the d squared law is essentially saying that if you now are looking at uh, the rate at which the evaporation happens the time of evaporation is proportional to square of the diameter okay. and we notice that the square of the diameter is going to be um, sort of like the surface area and uh, we, we also then notice that if you now look at the m dot the mass flux the square of the radius shows up which means the square of the diameter shows up and this in fact is the surface area 4 pi r squared or else squared is the surface area of the droplet. Uh, so all, all that seems okay and now we got an m dot. How in the world are we supposed to get the d squared law from this okay. So or, or, or uh, how are we supposed to now find out how the d squared varies with time for the droplet regression okay. We have adopted a quasi steady assumption by which in the instantaneous snapshot at a particular time the m dot is like this without any time dependence any further okay. And the time dependence that we have gotten rid of is the small time scale that, that, that it takes for the gases to dis diffuse and convect at a particular snapshot uh, freeze frame time. And uh, from this time for you to get to the next time when the droplet regresses significantly takes a lot of time and then we will now look at the picture now and then do this balance and then figure out what the current m dot is and so on that is what we are trying to do. So if you want to try to understand this further um, it, it, it is it will, it will be helpful if we do some more simplifications okay. So let us try to do that. So let us try to do some simplifications here um, the first thing that we will say is y o l is approximately equal to 0 that means we are saying that the droplet uh, the oxidizer as it diffuses all the way to the the droplet surface is pretty much of zero, 0 concentration or put it another way all the species that you have at the droplet surface is going to be mainly fuel vapor. So if all of it is going to be fuel vapor it is completely displaced all oxidizer so you do not really have any oxidizing species. This is one way of looking at it in a, in, in a mostly evaporation situation in a combustion situation it is it is lot more convenient because we expect that the fuel vapor and the oxidizer vapor are going to diffuse against each other radially uh, and uh, meet at stoichiometric proportions where the flame is and then get consumed there. Right, so if you if you now took a uh, magnifying glass and looked at this particular uh, sheet, uh, we should now be able to find out how these things um, um, gradually decline. Uh, the the oxidizer con the the fuel concentration gradually declines up to this flame and then rapidly declines because of consumption, and the oxidizer concentration gradually declines as you go radially inward because of diffusion and then rapidly decline across the flame. Right. 
and therefore at at the droplet uh, surface you are not going to get any oxidizer at all. So YOL can be assumed to be more or less 0 without much of a uh, problem. The exception see when it any time you make a assumption which is simplifying you have to look at how good it is okay or uh, uh, when would it not be um, held and the answer is this is not really quite true uh, near uh, uh, extinction conditions that is when the droplet is going to actually extinguish right you have a rather weak flame and you have ample opportunity for the oxidizer to diffuse past the flame in spite of going through uh, reactions and consuming getting consumed quite a bit because it is not getting con completely consumed right so yeah, this is um, mostly true uh, true uh, particularly uh, in combustion situation except except um, near extinction conditions. So that is one simplification what would that give me that will get rid of uh, the YOL here right that will get rid of the YOL here. So it is kind of like we could uh, uh, send this to a hairdresser and get it to be ni nicely dressed up and look like a very simple expression right. So that we are trying to get rid of some of these terms uh, that way. Let us also assume that TL is equal to TB which is the boiling point of the liquid that is a simplifying assumption in reality we have to actually look at something called a saturation temperature and, and, and so on which depends on the ambient, ambient uh, 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 what do you call the uh, ambient composition of its vapor and so on so you have to look at vapor pressure. Uh, balancing the, pre the the actual pressure and all those things. Now we let us not really worry about all that we will simply say TL the, the droplet the temperature is going to be uh, the same as the boiling point and uh, let us assume that rho D is a constant uh, which is equal to K, K divided by CP okay because L equal to 1 and um, suppose CPI equals equals constant equals CP all, all CPs are the same and it is it is it is it is constant um, right. So make these assumptions and uh, what do you have we get so with which we can now try to evaluate this integral also right. So rho d gets pulled out of the integral and you can you can you can integrate um, dr divided by 4 pi r squared right uh, that is not a problem and then substitute the limits you get m dot equals 4 pi k rl over cp that is what rho d has now become um, times natural logarithm. 1 plus CP you can now in, uh, evaluate the integral inside as well um, as simply T infinity minus TB um, plus QYO infinity divided by um, I should say we have a WO nu O divided by L right. Okay, you still have some expression, but this is a little bit more manageable. We can we can try to understand uh, something more. Let let's just think about it uh, for a minute. Okay, what this means is this is the sensible enthalpy. Okay, for the gas going from the boiling point of the uh, droplet to the ambient temperature. So this is the sensible enthalpy rise of the gas that is coming out of the um, droplet. This would actually be corresponding to the heat of combustion. So for the moment let us not worry about the heat of combustion okay. Let us suppose that we are thinking about evaporation that means you have an ambient hot gas that is trying to evaporate the droplet 
and that means it is sim simply giving rise to a sensible enthalpy uh, rise by L. So the L is what is actually is the latent heat that is required first of all for you to vaporize and then the next thing is you have to rise the temp sensible enthalpy okay. So the M dot is dictated by how much you are able to evaporate versus how well you are able to rise the sensible enthalpy of, of whatever we have evaporated. If you now throw in combustion you now have this term in, a, in addition okay. So the heat that is available to you goes first to evaporate the droplet and second to raise the sensible enthalpy okay. So you, you can see how the, these three processes essentially heat release that is available to you during combustion can go, uh, go on to raise the sensible enthalpy in competition with evaporating the droplet okay. So the, the, this is what is actually dictating this M dot. Now what we are interested is in trying to find out what is the relationship between or, or how is this RL going to change in time okay that is what we are really interested in. So for, for this purpose uh, we can we can see that um, so note notice that M dot is now linearly proportional to RL right. So say M dot equals K prime RL the reason why we are using K prime is K is reserved for the evaporation constant in the D squared law and that is what we are trying to deduce okay uh, we are trying to deduce the D squared law and therefore we want to see how, what is the dependence of the evaporation constant on the system parameters namely like the ambient, um, the ambient gas composition, the ambient gas temperature, the boiling point of the liquid, the latent heat of the, uh, um, the, the, the liquid and, and, and so on right. Um, so we, we want to know what the K is and so we now keep this as a K prime uh, so where, uh, where K prime is, is equal to except RL we have to write everything else which is 4 pi K divided by CP uh, natural logarithm um, 1 plus Cp T infinity minus Tb plus QYO um, infinity divided by WO nu O divided by L right. So keeping that as a K prime the next few minutes we are simply going to ignore all this all this stuff and going to basically say M dot is equal to K prime RL and let us see what that means right. So um, M dot uh, M dot on the other hand is negative 4 pi RL squared rho L d RL over dt right this t is now at the time scale of the droplet regression. It is not a shorter time scale of the gases equilibrating in diffusion and convection. So this is the kind of time that we are looking for in the D squared law. Uh, so this is now equal to K prime or L which means we can now uh, cancel the RL squared one of the RLs in the RL squared with this and uh, from this we can now write R, RL D RL equal to negative k prime divided by 4 pi rho l dt all right and then just go back and write this with uh, let us say rl not to um, rl any rl starting from t not to any t and that is now beginning to show up as the d squared law so this is one half RL squared minus RL not squared or, or uh, okay let us just keep it that way and we have a negative sign uh, to fix things. So we have a 4 pi rho L T minus T naught and of course now this negative sign will allow us to flip things because RL not is actually greater than RL um, therefore uh, we want to keep things positive um, and keep in mind 
RL is nothing but DL over 2, so RL squared will be DL squared over 4 and uh, so the 4 and 2 are going to get together to make an 8 and then of course you have a 4 pi that is going to go away and K prime also has a 4 pi, so do not do not uh, get be in a hurry to cancel that with the 8 okay. Um, so DL not squared minus DL squared is equal to 8K prime divided by 4 pi rho L T minus T naught. So now it is beginning to look like the D squared law. Boy, couple of minutes, in couple, I mean about 10 minutes ago, this did not look like the D squared law at all. <laughs> okay, but that is the D squared law there. And uh, so we have the D squared law. Uh, so with the evaporation constant. K, right? So what's the d squared law? Just 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 for the sake of completeness, d squared, dl not squared uh, um, equals k times t minus t not k equal to so evaporation constant k, right? Mm, where k equal to? We just have to put things together. Um, 8 k prime divided by 4 pi rho L and then of course uh, you have a, so you just divide this by 4 pi rho L um, and then put, throw in an 8 and you are simply going to get a 8 k divided by rho L Cp natural logarithm 1 plus 1 over L Cp T infinity minus Tb. plus Q um, y, y O infinity uh, divided by W O nu O right and as I said all the dependences that we are looking for are there in the evaporation constant. You can also use this for evaporation as well as combustion. All you have to do is neglect the heat of combustion for getting the evaporation. Uh, if you want to keep the combustion, then keep the heat of heat of combustion, and and you will get uh, an additional additional evaporation rate. Okay, so that means because of the combustion, it uh, burns faster. It, it, it uh, regresses faster. That's what it simply means. So with this, we should stop doing droplet burning. And we will see what what else we need to do uh, next week.